Tourism is a major industry that can really help boost development in LICs and NEEs. It helps to generate jobs, both direct and indirect. Examples of direct tourist job opportunities include people working in hotels, tourist sites and other tourist activities. This can then lead to more indirect employment through the multiplier effect, with jobs such as farmers supplying hotel chains, taxi drivers taking people to and from hotels, or plumbers who may need to service different hotels and tourist sites. We can describe this as the multiplier effect, where the development of one industry has an impact on other related industries. So tourism will generate income for people, and in turn tax receipts for the country, whilst also helping with a positive balance of trade. Tourism accounts for 13.6% of the world economy, including 9.9% of all jobs. This isn't evenly distributed, however, with HICs having a lower percentage of their income coming from tourism than LICs. 2.6% in the USA and 3.7% in the UK compared to some LICs and NEEs that have over 20% of their income coming from tourism. Interestingly, the top 20 destinations that are the most reliant upon tourism are smaller island nations, such as the Maldives at 39.6% or the British Virgin Islands at 35.4%. International tourist arrivals have risen sharply over the last 70 years, from only a few million in 1950 to a staggering 1.4 billion in 2018, with Europe having the most arrivals at around 700 million in 2018. One of the growth areas for tourism has been the development of cruises. There's been a steady growth in this part of the sector between 2009 and 2019, with cruise passenger numbers reaching 30 million in 2019, with over 1,000 cruise liner ports around the world. The most popular destination of cruise passengers has been the Caribbean, accounting for a third of the entire market, but areas such as South America and China are growing rapidly. The cruise liner industry generated $130 billion and $50 billion in wages in 2019, whilst 50 new ocean-going cruise ships have been commissioned for delivery by 2025. Governments around the world need to ask themselves whether the development of tourism is beneficial to their overall economy, with areas such as the Caribbean looking closely at the benefits and impacts of the industry. Most visitors to the Caribbean come from HICs and will expect high standards of health and safety, hygiene and facilities for their stay. So the multiplier effect can come into play, with overall facilities for the area being improved for locals as well, whilst taxes paid by visitors can be directed towards the improvement of conditions for the local population. In the Caribbean, the impact can be clearly seen with every $100,000 invested into the industry helping to create 50 new jobs, and every hotel room that's created adding at least one job as well. Marine tourism alone generates 200 million jobs. Also, for every $1 spent by a visitor, $1.6 can be generated from long-stay visitors and an extra $1.2 by visitors from cruise ships. Of this revenue, different amounts will get ploughed back into the economy, with 95% of ecotourist revenue going back into the economy, compared to 20% for all-inclusive package tours. One negative impact, though, is the approximately 70,000 tonnes of wastewater produced by cruise ships annually. The Cayman Islands are three islands set in the Caribbean Sea to the south of Cuba. Grand Cayman, the largest of the islands, has award-winning beaches, like Seven Mile Beach, along with fantastic variety of marine life. It has iguanas in the Queen Elizabeth II Botanic Garden and great visitor centres like the Turtle Centre, National Museum of the Cayman Islands, traditional craft markets and trails through subtropical forests. The islands boast up to 9 hours of sunshine per day in July and August with average temperatures between 27 and 30 degrees throughout the year. The Caribbean region has experienced a steady rise in visitor numbers but the spending per visitor has decreased over the last 30 years Cruise ships have become larger and provide better facilities, so many people choose to stay on board rather than get off and spend their money at the different destinations. In 2019, the government proposed the development of a new port and cruise ship terminal in the capital of Georgetown. The current port was built in 1977 and really didn't provide a good impression for visitors, who had to walk through the container yard when they arrived. The multi-use development project aimed to create an improved environment on the waterfront with more social and economic opportunities. There are no docking facilities for cruise liners, 
so passengers have to be transferred by small boats. This can put people off going ashore if they have to wait for a long time to get on the next boat. So, part of the proposal is to create two piers of 305 metres long and 18 metres wide that provide berthing facilities for four cruise liners, including ships that can carry 6,000 passengers. Without the new terminal, the government claims that cruise traffic could fall by 50% because cruise companies would simply go to other islands with better access. This would be devastating for the 5,000 local people who rely on cruise tourism for their employment. The number of jobs would certainly increase if the development went ahead. A coral reef will need to be dredged to a depth of 10 metres in order to accommodate these ships, a development that many environmental groups are concerned about. Locals have also voiced concerns because the worry is that the development will damage the very pristine, unique environment that visitors come to experience, such as Seven Mile Beach. As they arrive, there'll be a pedestrianised shopping and leisure area, with parking for buses and taxis. Some local tourist businesses have voiced concerns about the leisure area, claiming that long-stay visitors will bring in much more money than cruise visitors, with cruise passengers spending 55% less than a long-term stay visitor. The development will be on 7.7 .7 acres of reclaimed land created from dredge material. This will allow the development of a separate area for cargo and shipping. The development of the new port facilities will create various opportunities in Georgetown, which are some of the poorest parts of the island. Hundreds of new skilled and unskilled jobs will be generated by the development, which also incorporates the Georgetown Revitalization Initiative that aims to create business and living spaces in new and already existing buildings. Cafes and restaurants will allow people to gather along a pedestrianised area that has seating, green areas with trees providing shade, improved access for cyclists and improved lighting for the evenings. The government have taken the views of locals on board and aim to keep the environmental impact to a minimum, working with different environmental groups to identify any impacts. Divers will monitor the marine environment to keep damage to a minimum and a coral transplanting, restoration and relocation plan will make sure the coral reef is protected as much as possible. The impact assessment from the proposal identified both positive and negative aspects of the development. Positive impacts include the guarantee of cruise ship tourism growth for the island, a large number of cruise passengers coming on shore, an increase of trade for the local businesses, a reduction in the small boat congestion and a reduction in marine accidents, the separation of cargo and cruise ships, the regeneration of the Georgetown Harbour area. However, there are some negative impacts to consider. The damage to the coral reefs along with some diving sites being removed. The reduction of visitor numbers in the water sports sector leading to a loss of income. The increased number of cruise visitors might impact on the stay of visitors in a busier Georgetown. An increase in costs for managing tourists and an increase in vehicles and pedestrians in Georgetown, leading to congestion. One of the Cayman Islands' largest attractions is its coral reef, one of the world's most precious reefs and praised by King Charles. Unfortunately, 15 acres of the reef, home to endangered turtles, will be under threat from the construction of cruise ship docks. Environmental groups have warned that around 22 acres of seabed will be dredged, destroying world-class coral reefs turning the water murky and permanently damaging the ecosystem in the area and having consequences for future generations. Indeed, many environmentalists have pointed out that developing port facilities in other parts of the Caribbean has not always generated the expected income, whilst almost always creating environmental issues. Both positive and negative impacts must be considered when deciding whether to proceed with large regeneration projects, such as the one proposed in the Cayman Islands.